Hello, rebel scum. You rebel scum. I'm Mike, and I'm taking that phrase back from the imperial propaganda machine that invented it. The empire feeds on the fear of its constituents, and they love showing off their power with massive super weapons and fleets of giant phallic star destroyers. But the most terrifying symbol of Palpatine's regime is his limitless army of white clad murder machines. From their humble origins as Kiwi clones to the human conscripts that make up the First Order, stormtroopers have terrorized the Star Wars galaxy for decades. And if you're really serious about smashing fascism and restoring the Republic, you're gonna need to know how to kill stormtroopers. When it comes to the first line of defense against the jackbooted thugs of the universe, hokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side. Standard issue stormtrooper armor consists of 18 plastoid plates and a hermetically sealed helmet with a state-of-the-art optic system. I can't see a thing in this helmet. I'm sure it's more effective than the khakis and earth tone vests worn by the rebels, but in practice the uniform seems to offer less protection than Little League catcher's gear. Blaster bolts burn right through the armor regardless of the source. It doesn't matter if you got a tiny pistol or a high caliber starfighter cannon, more often than not it's one shot, one kill. A hardened melee fighter like FN2199 can kick the crap out of a trainer like Finn, but he doesn't last too long when he's staring down the barrel of a bowcaster. Mm, I like this thing. And just look at Baze Malbus put down an entire squad of death troopers. These guys have advanced tech and are genetically modified to make them the most elite soldiers the Empire has. But one by one, they fall to a single shot from an admittedly huge gun. The armor's material can disperse the energy of a glancing shot, but a direct hit will bore a hole clear through your average grunt. And lucky for us, most freedom-loving citizens of the galaxy have way better aim than Palpatine's finest. But the Empire seizes victory through strength in numbers, not functional armor and basic marksmanship. If they throw enough bodies at you, your gun is gonna eventually jam or you're gonna run out of juice, but if your blaster fails, Fear you should not, because stormtroopers have zero protection from blunt force trauma. Their armor might be worthless against supercharged plasma, but you'd think it would at least help them against a bump on the noggin. In Rogue One, Chirrut obliterates a half dozen troops with nothing more than a wooden stick. It's not even pointy. Granted, Chirrut has some advantages. The force is with him for one, and I'm sure he's expertly aware of the weak points between the plates. He's also Donnie f***ing Yen. But how do you explain a bunch of Ewoks cracking heads like eggs? During the rise of the Empire, the 501st Legion captured an entire planet of technologically sophisticated Wookiees. But just a few years later, a whole platoon of stormtroopers gets their asses handed to them by a primitive tribe of teddy bears. Look, I wouldn't mess with Ewoks either. They eat humans after all, so you better think twice about insulting their god. But these little guys are pretty far behind on the tech tree, especially compared to an imperial army with the power to destroy whole f planets. How do their stone arrowheads pierce through thick plastic? How does a little club swung by a three foot tall beanie baby knock out a fully grown man in armor? And what good is a helmet if a foam rock can fracture your skull? This is what happens when you contract your armor out to the lowest bidder. The gear doesn't protect them from high falls either. Maybe I was wrong in the first section. Maybe troopers can survive a direct blaster shot, but only if a bottomless pit is nearby. I'm sure Turkin was in a rush to finish the Death Star, but would it have killed him to install a few railings? I think Osha would have some serious concerns, but the Emperor doesn't give a shit about his troops. <laughs> He'd rather blow the budget on giant death lasers and cool capes for his personal guard. But even if he did care, all the money in the world won't buy you armor to protect you from lightsabers. We don't actually see a lot of saber versus stormtrooper action in the movies. In fact, Finn running this guy through is one of the few times in the whole saga a trooper falls to a plasma blade. 
Obi-Wan only fights Vader and some cantina thugs, and Luke's still reliant on his blaster and empire. In Jedi, Luke slices up a bunch of Jabba's goons, but he gets captured peacefully before he can cut loose on any troopers. Well, he does chop off the tip of a speeder bike which sends it into a tailspin, but I'd say the big ass tree is a more direct cause of death. In the prequels, the clones are on the Jedi's side, at least for most of it. And once they execute Order 66, everyone is too shocked to fight back. Except for this one little kid. Of course, with enough prep time, a determined Jedi can cut through a squad of troopers like their butter. Just look at what happens when some clones try to arrest Pong Krell. I will not be undermined by creatures bred in some laboratory. Honestly, if you want to see troopers slice the dice, you should just do it yourself. Starting with Jedi Knight 2's legendary dismemberment mod, most Star Wars video games show off the gory power of a lightsaber in a way the movies never could. The Force Unleashed in particular relishes in all the ways you can cut through the Imperial Army. By the end, you've shredded thousands of stormtroopers in hilariously brutal ways, and you could probably build the third Death Star out of just severed limbs alone. But if you're too squeamish to get up close and personal, you can rest easier when the blood on your hands is just collateral damage. At a certain point, you've got to stop thinking small. The Empire's bigger equals better strategy comes with one major downside. All those mile-long space fortresses need a lot of crew. We're all fine here now, thank you. How are you? After all, someone's gotta stare at all those blinking lights and those levers, they're not gonna pull themselves. The Imperial Navy constitutes the bulk of the staff, but most ships contain a sizable stormtrooper garrison. Your average Star Destroyer has about 9,700 stormtroopers on board, and that's tiny compared to the massive dreadnoughts like Darth Vader's Executor or Snoke's flagship, the Supremacy. When these bad boys go down, so do all the poor souls on board. Why bother blasting a bunch of individual stormtroopers when one crazy asshole in an A-wing can wipe out thousands? In Rogue One, the Rebels take out two Star Destroyers simultaneously using just an ion cannon and the laws of physics. Prepare for impact. Nearly 20,000 stormtrooper lives vanish in an instant. It's no wonder why the Empire wants to upgrade to an impenetrable Death Star. Of course, a bigger ship just means more Imperial casualties. The first Death Star had 1.2 million people on board, and the second was even bigger. Of course, that number is inflated by a lot of civilians and hardworking independent contractors. All those innocent contractors brought in to do the job were killed. Casualties of a war they had nothing to do with but there were plenty of stormtroopers stationed on both. And they all died a horrible, fiery death when the rebels blew them all to hell. It's harsh, but the Empire had already snuffed out billions of lives on Alderaan, and was just milliseconds away from destroying the galaxy's last hope. Luke had no choice but to fire his proton torpedoes and kill a million people. It was the will of the Force after all, and you can't let your buddy down after he does you such a huge solid. Great shot, kid, that was one in a million. Just like you can't let down the Alliance, we're counting on you, soldier. It might not take a lot to kill a stormtrooper, but the beautiful thing about cannon fodder is that you always have plenty of chances to practice. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm still kind of reeling from the news that Disney just bought Fox. We actually want to do a video about the big acquisition, so we're asking you, what would you guys like to see us talk about? What kind of questions do you have, and what are you most looking forward to? Let us know in the comments, and as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd.